when it comes to understanding the Bible better, uh, what it means and how it's supposed to shape our lives and, and all of that stuff, getting our heads around that, one of the best things, one of the first things that we should do is to try to put ourselves into the heads of those who originally wrote and read whatever text it is that we are studying. And here's why. Uh, many of us think that that ideas and concepts and words like the gospel and discipleship and, and the kingdom, that those things have always belonged to Christianity, that, that the church invented those things or, or Jesus came up with those things when he came on the scene. And the reality is that, that that's not true. Uh, the church and Jesus They borrowed concepts and ideas and words that already existed in the culture around them. Uh, They used those things and lived within those things. And like Jesus always tends to do, he ends up reforming it and turning some stuff on its head or using it in ways that are unexpected. But but those things existed already. They literally lived in a kingdom. That was a, a present reality for them. There were gospels that were preached and proclaimed all the time. And discipleship was something that that happened on a daily basis, both in the religious and the secular world. And and I want to dig into that uh, a little bit. For for the secular world, we could look at philosophers, uh, Socrates and and all those folks, and and see that they had disciples. They would call them disciples because they would pass on their teaching to them in hopes that that then they would pass on their teaching to the next generation. Uh, They wanted to, to pass on the way that they saw and understood the world that they lived in. And so that kind of mirrors a lot of what I think many of us think about when it comes to being a disciple. We think of that as being a student, uh, a learner. And so we have a classroom setting in mind when we think about being a disciple. And and that's true. That, that should be part of what it looks like for us to be a disciple, that learning, that uh, having our mind reformed and, and changed and, and conformed to uh, truth. That is totally True, but it's not all that it means to be a disciple, is to, is to learn information. Um, when we look at the Jewish understanding of what it meant to be a disciple, it was somebody who genuinely wanted to become like this person, like their rabbi, like their master, like their teacher. They would see someone they wanted to be like and pursue after them and ask uh, not just to sit under their feet so that they could learn and believe what this person believes, but so that they could become like them. Uh, And and so what you actually end up seeing is the philosophers eventually ditch the term disciple because it becomes too enmeshed with living and and changing the way that you do things and all of that. They weren't interested in a holistic uh, understanding of anything. They they just wanted to think rightly. They didn't care about living rightly. And so really uh, a disciple wasn't just a learner or a student. A more appropriate uh, translation or understanding would be an adherent or an apprentice, this uh, more holistic way of, of certainly learning, but then that learning transfers into skill and life and doing things a particular way. That's what a disciple is, someone who is becoming like their master. And so when we consider what Jesus might have been calling us to, inviting us into, when he says, man, would you come and follow me, be my disciple? And when he asks us to make and mature and multiply new disciples, yes, he certainly wants us to learn from him uh, and, and teach others that they might know and think rightly about him and about the world. But more than that, more than that, he wants us to become like him. And so, Uh, In this little video, that's kind of what I want to leave you with, is that if we're going to enter into a faithful biblical understanding of what it means to be a disciple, it's not enough for us just to read books. It's not enough for us just to grow in knowledge, but we ought to be becoming like Jesus. That is the mark of a disciple, Uh, someone who is holistically submitting their life to him and, and becoming like him in every way. And so uh, I'm excited to explore some more of what it means to be a disciple, what discipleship is, what discipling other people can look like based on this and more things that we'll tease out down the road. But I just want to leave you with, with that and consider where are you? What does it look like for you to be a disciple? Are you someone who's simply listening to podcasts and reading books and blogs and tweets um, and that's kind of it? Or are you allowing Jesus to shape the way that you live on a daily basis? Are you becoming more like your master?